Hello again, everybody. Doing a tutorial today again. Something that was, I guess, confusing to viewers. Try to simplify it as much as I can. Fuel injection is a, a, a very, a, a very complicated and difficult subject to comprehend. And therefore, the electronics of it is is difficult. And the theory of it is even more difficult, believe it or not. But we'll try to do our best. And please subscribe to my channel, Automotive Electronic Somatics by Joseph. Like I said, uh, I need about a thousand subscribers. As you know, in the beginning, it's difficult. And that's why I'm um, just acknowledging um, the people they can do that. Now, when it comes to ignition control module, we know we need a spark. And... Uh, this is part of this module, as you see over here. Ignition control module for a Chevy. We're discussing a Chevy. Now, in order to get spark, we have to have variable things. We have a primary, we have a secondary transformer with a core, magnetic core between. And we have, as you see by the symbol of it, loops of wire when simply put when current flows through a conductor a magnetic field is induced now when you make loops or you want to make windings of that conductor current flows but however current cannot reach its maximum instantaneously as opposed to a straight wire where the current will reach the maximum instantly. There's no opposition, no react reactance, so to say, resistance. Therefore, when you create loops or you may create a transformer, you create voltages in each loop, so to say. So the current tries to reach its maximum of inductance through the inductor. It creates a magnetic field through each loop. However, there is an opposition. Opposition meaning any change in current by this, meaning when you close this switch, as we'll talk about, there is a, going to be a change in the current. You know, you need AC to have a transformer from primary to secondary, because there is a change in current, a change in voltage. This will create a change of voltage. When you create a, a change in voltage, current, there is an opposition to it. So, it will create a magnetic field, and each loop will have a magnetic field and induce voltage, a voltage across each loop. However, it will oppose the change, meaning it tries to reach maximum. It doesn't want to reach maximum. It will oppose it. Like, almost like a counter EMF. And therefore, it will reach that maximum as long as this switch is closed. But there is a certain limit, on, and it will be saturated, and after that, it can't reach its peak no more. That's it. It reached its maximum. Putting that into... into into our situation over here we how do you create spark at what crankshaft position sensor what is a camshaft position sensor what does a pm pcm have to do with anything over here what does a knock sensor have to do i mean many videos about these these things and like i said very complicated but 12 volts coming in always a 15 amp fuse we have two directions for current to flow. Remember, current flows, not voltage flows. Current flows, a pink wire over here to the A terminal. This other pink wire over here to this A terminal. B is not used. C is connected to this. And then the D is connected to C. This gives it the 12 volts. Ignition one voltage means the 12 volts is, is here. Okay, to start the module, we need 12 volts. If you have problems with this module, always check for 12 volts. Obviously, coming in, terminal A. That's the first thing. Now, other thing. We said that 
we induce a voltage. We create a magnetic field. And from primary, how do we get the, 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 the voltage from the primary to the secondary? Well, that's the job of this thing, the switch. You can think of it as, believe it or not, you can think of it as a gun that you want to fire. When are you going to pull the trigger? Okay, when are you going to pull the trigger? The computer will tell you when to pull the trigger by timing, a timing signal. It will tell you when this is the trigger, this is the, the timing when to pull the trigger. So what happens when you open this up? This magnetic field collapses. When Remember, there's less turns over here and there's maybe 20,000 turns over here, whatever the ratio is. More voltage across here. So this might be 40,000 volts. Therefore, when this collapses, why does this collapse? Because we just opened it. We opened the switch. No more current flowing. Now, there's an opposition. It wants to decrease the current. So therefore, it creates, it collapses, it creates a voltage, a spark, into the secondary. And that, there's your spark. Right there. Once you open this up, you collapse the magnetic field in the primary. This is called the primary. Right here is the primary circuit. The secondary gets the voltage, the high voltage uh, spikes because of the collapse, uh, uh, um, collapse uh, a magnetic field. And since it's the high voltage, it's able to jump, let's say, the gap. Primary to secondary of the of the spark plugs so to say okay spark plug obviously that's where the spark is created you need that high spark high voltage to make it jump over the air gap of the spark plug and that's where you, this comes in i hope that's clear we give it a ground a physical ground g105 means a physical ground not a ground from the computer Again, we pull the trigger. When do we pull the trigger? Mm -hmm. That's the interesting point. Over here you see the PCM, the computer. This will tell us when to pull the trigger on the gun. To collapse the magnetic field, which will build a higher voltage, which will be able to jump the air gap in a spark plug to give a spark. When do we know to pull the trigger? Crankshaft position, there, there is a distributor for the camshaft position sensor. In this, this is central sequential fuel injection, meaning we fire the cylinders sequential, one after the other, individually. Therefore, before the intake valve opens, we fire, we, we open the fuel injector. But also... When do we fire? So we got fuel. So we open up the intake valve. We have air. What about the spark? Well, this is the role of, of that. A low reference for this. A camshaft position sensor is on the distributor. Part of distributor, as you see. When distributor turns, right? According to revolutions of the camshaft. Therefore, a voltage will be created. That voltage will tell us the camshaft. The position number one cylinder, piston number one. But that's zero, and this is the feedback from that sensor. A quick thing over here also, crankshaft position sensor also. This, this one has actually a reluctor on the, on the uh, distributor. When it passes the teeth, it creates a magnetic field, and then it induces a voltage. Over here, when every tooth of, let's say, of the of the crankshaft is, there's a pickup coil. That pickup coil is a magnetic field, as I said over here. That magnetic field is stronger when the tooth is in line with the pickup coil. In between the teeth... There's a weaker magnetic field because it's expanded. It'll give you volts. 
when the tooth is in line with the pickup coil, which is our sensor over here, the magnetic field is stronger, but we get no volts, zero volts close to it. Therefore, when the PC PCM sees this is turning, but it's in line with the tooth, magnetic field is, is, is stronger, it knows no volts. What happens when there's no volts? You guessed it. That's the time that we go and we fire, we pull the trigger on the gun to pull the spark. By the teeth, in line with the pickup coil. The camshaft sensor plays a role. When you first turn on the car, the camshaft position set tells us where cylinder number one is, piston number one. This is a, a signal. This is 12, 12 volt reference that the PCM gives it. This is like a ground. Low reference means a ground given by the PCM. As opposed to this one is a physical ground, metal ground, chassis ground, body ground. This is one that is given a low reference whenever you see that. Reference low, reference high. So this is the signal from this telling us how much the voltage is, this, the, the voltage created. And therefore, according to that voltage, it knows when to fire the trigger, when to fire the gun, when to fire the spark, to fire the piston. Because the piston will be top dead center. Once you cre once the spark comes, boom, piston goes down on the power stroke. Question is, how do we know what's inputs? How do we know what's outputs? Very important. Sensors are inputs. Always remember this. Always. Is this an input? 12 volts is just 12 volts. Low reference, we said it's a ground given by this. This is an input. How do we know? Because it tells us the present condition of the position of the crankshaft's crankshaft pulley and the RPM that it's turning. We want to make sure that the crankshaft is turning. We want to make sure that the camshaft pulley is 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 turning with revolutions per minute. Therefore, we get signals from them, voltages, telling us that they are turning. This is an input. If it gives us information, any information about the engine, the pulley, the crankshaft, where the teeth are, whatever it is, air, temperature, it is an input to the computer. Because people have been asking me this. What is this? Is this an output or an input? This is an input again. It's a sensor. It gives us the position of the camshaft, the revolutions, and the number one cylinder, the position. It is an input. What about this? The knock sensor. Knock sensor tells us about something called detonation. Detonation is where sometimes where you have the air fuel mixture inside the cylinders, it's a little too hot. And you get these like these flames. Well, those flames will collide with when the air fuel mixture is ignited, it will collide. That's called detonation. This is called a PO, piezoelectric a sensor, which vibrates. When it vibrates, has a voltage. Also, something called when there's knocking or pinging in the cylinders, which is a signal low enough that this will pick it up. This is like a microphone almost. You could think of it as a microphone. It'll pick up that noise in the smallest signal level. That we can't hear. So the computer says, okay, now there's, there's uh, 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 pinging, knocking, pre-ignition, that nation, whatever. And it says, okay, now that means the, it might, the air fuel rate, uh, uh, mixture might ignite before it's supposed to, which will push the piston down. No. That, then the spark will be delayed or come early, retarded. Or advanced. In other words, it will hold. It will hold the spark until the proper time. It will hold it earlier, before the time it's supposed to. It'll hold it, and then it'll fire 
the spark. That's what the knock sensor tells us. These are inputs. Input, input, input. Now, many times when you have problems with the crankshaft sensor or the camshaft sensor telling you there's no RPM or they're not turning, engine is not turning, well, then the PCM says, okay, I'll shut off the fuel injectors. I'll shut off the ignition coil. No reason to give spark, no reason to give fuel if the engine is not turning. And that's what it's looking for, looking for these signals. This signal, this signal it's looking for to make sure it's turning. How many times you get a code that, oh, crankshaft sensor. Problem with that, a code, right? Well, either there is, either, either there is a problem, obviously, with the engine or there is a problem with the sensor itself, right? And obviously, if there's a problem with itself, Guess what happens? That notorious check engine light comes on. And sometimes that check engine light is on more than our own headlights are on in the car. So when you get that check engine light and you get a code for a crankshaft position sensor, it could be the sensor, it could be obviously many other things. Why the engine is not is not turning. Crankshaft position sensor tells the computer, hey, it's not turning. The PCM just does, the 